Hey guys, welcome back to Token Tech. Today I want to talk about a piece of tech that comes up every so often that always gets me interested, but then reality always sinks in. And what I'm talking about is external graphics card boxes. So just recently we had CES, and at CES the first thing I saw from CES was an external graphics card box from Lenovo. And I thought it was a really cool idea at first. And what they're doing is they're selling a laptop that does not have a discrete graphics card, so only Intel integrated graphics, as a gaming laptop. And what that means is if you really want to game on it, like play real AAA games, you're going to need some graphics horsepower from some other source. And so they're pairing this with an external graphics card box, which only comes with a power supply, and you'll have to add your own graphics card to it. This will connect to... Uh, the laptop over Thunderbolt 3, I believe, and you'll be able to use that to game when you're home at your desk, and then take the laptop with you on the go, which will be relatively thin, relatively light, get relatively good battery life on the go for everything else you need to do throughout the day, um, and again, when you come home, plug it in, play your games. Now, at first, it sounds almost like the perfect solution. You're plugging in your graphics card when you need it, and when you don't need it, you don't need to lug around that extra power, that extra weight. It's going to suck up your battery life, you know, it's going to make the experience of a laptop less than what it should be, right? Now, this sounds great in a vacuum if everything works perfectly, but there's one killer, one downside to this. And what that comes down to is, well, price is one, I guess, so there's really two. Price and, well, bandwidth. So what happens is with Thunderbolt 3, you get four PCIe lanes. That's going to limit the performance of your graphics card. You can't just pop any graphics card in there and get more and more performance as you go up the ladder. You will hit a point of diminishing returns because there's just not enough bandwidth to send that much data. And if you're using the internal display of the laptop, you're going to get even less bandwidth because it has to send the image back or the video feed back through that same connection, which is going to limit you even more. So what am I getting at here? So in here I have a graphics card, which most of you watching probably have a graphics card in your computer, and that uses 16 lanes of PCIe. Most graphics cards today use PCIe 3.0. This is a 5700 XT, which uses PCIe 4.0, although that's not that relevant right now. The main issue here is how many lanes it uses. 16, 16. So it has plenty of bandwidth to send data at really high speeds, and give me a really great gaming experience on my home desktop. Now if you cut that in half to eight, you're gonna notice it. It's not gonna be a huge difference, but you will notice the difference. Okay, you're gonna cut your bandwidth in half, and depending on the graphics card, you know, mid-range to low end, you probably won't notice it, but something on the higher end, you will notice cutting those lanes in half. Now, cut that in half again, so go to one-fourth the size, which is four lanes versus 16, and almost every graphics card is going to feel that impact. Meaning that if you plug in a GTX 1060, which mind you is a generation old, versus something like a 2060 or a 2070 or the 2080 Ti, the performance is basically going to be the same because you're limited by bandwidth. So that's the first problem. Now even a 1060 is going to be limited by that four lanes. Believe me, it will be. Maybe not the biggest limitation, but it will be. So that means you're going to be going down below what you would say, like below a 1060, below a 580. So you're going all the way down to what, a 560? Maybe a 570 won't feel it too bad, but probably will. Or something like a, what, GTX 1050 Ti? Okay, so you're not getting that crazy good performance, and there are laptops out there that have those chips in them, have 1050 Ti's in them, have 1660's in them, you know, that perform very well, get decent battery life, aren't that heavy, aren't that big, aren't, don't have really any trade-offs, and aren't too expensive either, usually under a thousand dollars, and you'll have a decent gaming experience, and you'll have a good, you know, productivity experience. So you're really, this, this doesn't, this shouldn't exist, right? It's a cool idea, but unless they can give you more bandwidth, so eight lanes of PCIe 4 or something like that, it really isn't going to work out. And I'm not an engineer, so I don't know what is holding this back and why they haven't increased the lanes, and maybe we will in the future, but it's just, it really isn't going to work out nicely. And so you'll have a better experience and spend less money by getting a, a laptop that's relatively thin and relatively light for less money, because this laptop they're pitching is going to be around 
a thousand to eleven hundred dollars. The graphics card box, which mind you does not come with a graphics card, is going to be around two fifty, and then you have to buy a graphics card on top of that. So at the end of the day, you're spending the price you'd pay for a really nice laptop, fifteen hundred to seventeen hundred dollars, which again in that price range you can get a much better gaming laptop, which today are relatively thin. They're pretty thin. You can get a Max Q design, which won't give you all the gaming performance, but better than what this box is going to give you pretty much, and also allow you to have pretty good battery life and portability. So I really don't get why these products are even out there. I like the idea of it. Don't get me wrong, I do like the idea of it, but there's just not enough bandwidth for high performance graphics, and the price just isn't there either. If the box was like $100 or came with the laptop so you didn't have to spend anything extra, maybe you could start to make a value argument, but even then it just doesn't really make sense to me. So. I really do believe that if you want to do something like this, either buy yourself a nice gaming desktop to play games at home and do work at home and get yourself a cheap used or cheap small light laptop for on the go. Um, but if you need that portability, you might as well just spend that $1,500 or more on a nice, really nice laptop. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I always love this technology. I just don't think it's quite ready yet. If they can increase that bandwidth and make it eight lanes of PCIe 4, then maybe we'll be talking. Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.